فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعد من أيام أخر شهر رمضان الذي فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُونَ شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم
وَمَن كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرَ يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعاني فليستجيبوا لي
وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَى أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعاني فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم صدق الله العظيم
اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا ومولانا محمد واصحابه بارك وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي بحق حبيبنا وسيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول الله تعالى في القران المجيد مخبرا وامرا قولا كريما ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا ومولانا محمد واصحابه وبارك وسلم my dearly beloved elders mothers and fathers brothers and sisters and beautiful children and all our viewers on the social media youtube facebook i greet you all with a wonderful universal greetings of love peace and mercy assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alhamdulillah first and foremost we thank our qari for that beautiful rendition of the glorious quran Of course our qari is here from Thailand and he will be part of our kira program on Sunday inshallah his name is Muad Qari Muad Mustafa also known as Abu Muhammad Milwan from Thailand ahlan wa sahlan bika ya fadilat al-sheikh nawarta kiptown wa nurahibuka wa naqulu laka alf marhaban ahlan wa sahlan ila madinat al-kaab We begin in the name of Allah most gracious most merciful all praise and glory belong to almighty Allah azza wa jal Allah the almighty sovereign of the skies and the earth Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika la As a Muslim I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah alone and Allah has no partner whatsoever وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أنا سمسلم أي بيوتنس أتى بليف إن أول الأبرفتس أنا بيوتنس أتى سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إيس الأبسلوت فاينل أف أول ديفاين إمسريس إن بروفتس فروم الله الحمد لله وي ثانك الله فور ذس موس بيوتيفول داي ذس وندفول داي of yawm al-jum'a good friday and every friday is good friday because the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so beautifully teaches us khayru yawmin tala'at fihi ash-shams yawm al-jum'a that the best day of the week on which the sun rises is the day of friday because of jum'a Why is Friday so sacred and so significant for us? Because the prophet says and we need to always remember this. Fihi khuliqa Adam. It was on a Friday that Allah created our father of humanity, Sayyiduna Nabi Adam alayhi salatu wassalam. He was created on a Friday. So humanity came into being on a friday wa fihi udkhila al janna and it was on a friday that allah placed him in janna to enjoy the bounties of janna and created for him his wife our mother of humanity sayyidatina hawa alayha salam wa fihi uhbitu ila al ard and it was on a friday that Allah took Nabi Adam and Sayyidina Hawa out from Jannah and placed them on earth. So the journey of humanity on earth started on a Friday. وَفِيهِ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةِ And the Prophet say, the last day when the world and everything will come to an end, that final day when Allah will order 
Malak Israfil alayhi salam to blow the trumpet and everything will be terminated. Everything will come to an end. That will be on a Friday. So the world will end on a Friday. One day a Friday will occur and no Saturday will come after that Friday. It will be the last day. And therefore we always need to respect Friday just in case it is the last day that the world is ending. We had respect and reverence for Yawmul Jumaa, the day that we need to dress our best, the day that we have to need, have our best of akhlaq, our character and mannerism, the day of love, the day of Friday that Allah has decreed as a day of Eid. Every week we have the day of Eid on a Friday for this Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This Friday, Jumu'ah, is so significant for us. We always pray to Allah, Oh Allah, grant us a good life and grant us a beautiful end from this world. Listen to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say. Man mata yawm al Whoever of my ummah, of the Muslimin, and they were true to Allah and obedient to Allah, and you die on a Friday, katab Allah lahu ajra shaheed. Allah will write you the reward of someone who die as a shaheed and as a martyr, if you die on a Friday. And also when you are buried in the loneliness of the grave, Allah will keep you protected from the fitna and the trials of the qabr. Even the angels will stand at a distance who want to interrogate you. He will be protected. And so when we ask Allah for protection and for a good end, we ask Allah to make us die shaheed. To make us die martyrs. Amen. And may Allah grant all of us a good end. But the focus of our talk is based also on the hadith where the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, Ana awla nas bi Isa bin Maryam. Of all the people, the Prophet وسلم, say, of all the people, I am the closest. To the Holy Prophet Jesus Christ. Nabi Isa alayhi salam. I am the closest to Nabi Isa, the son of Mary, the son of Maryam. Because between me and Nabi Isa alayhi salam, there was no prophet. Jesus was the second last prophet of Allah to come to this earth for the people of Israel, for the Jews. And after Jesus, Nabi Muhammad وسلم, was the last, the final, and the seal of all the prophets. Focusing on the personality of Jesus, whom we really call Nabi Isa salam, And Allah makes mention of Jesus approximately 25 times in the Quran. You know the name Muhammad وسلم, is only mentioned in the Quran four times. But the name of Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary, is mentioned 25 times in the glorious Quran. So important, Nabi Isa and every prophet is to us. It is an article of faith for us Muslims to believe in all the prophets. If any person say, I don't believe in Jesus, or I don't believe in Moses, or I don't believe in Abraham, you cannot be a Muslim. Immediately you are out of the fold of Islam, because every Muslim must believe in every prophet. And if Allah mentions Jesus 25 times in the Quran, it is a message for us to get to know the truth about this great prophet. Because Jesus was one of the mightiest messengers of God Almighty. He was one of the greatest prophets of Allah. He was a Nabi and a Rasul. A Rasul means someone 
who is a Nabi of Allah, but he also received a scripture. And because Nabi Isa received the Injil, a new scripture before the Quran, and after the Torah, which was given to Nabi Musa alayhi salam, so Nabi Musa is a Rasul, Nabi Daud is a Rasul, Nabi Isa is a Rasul, and Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam is also a Nabi and a Rasul. So we need to know because today, Jesus remains the most misunderstood person in history. And because he is to speak to his people in a very metaphorical way, sometimes calling the good people, he said, you are the sons of light. The evil people, he said, they are the sons of darkness. Now it doesn't mean this, the light gave birth or the darkness gave birth. It is a metaphorical way of expression. Those are the people who walk in the path of the light and those are the people who are misguided in the path of darkness. And so Jesus was understood many, many times by his own contemporaries and his own people. And today he is still very much misunderstood. Let me come to the facts by our differences with our Christian brethren. And it is important that I mention it because I always mention it on numerous occasions because the Quran mentioned it on numerous occasions because we need to get imprinted in our minds and our hearts that we must respect everyone despite our differences. Our main differences with our Christian brethren and many of us come from a Christian background. So we need to understand what is our stance as Muslim, but also remain and maintain the respect, the mutual respect for our Christian brethren. When it comes to the concept of the Holy Trinity, where the Christians believe that God is one, but is also three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they say, although it is three, it is also one. Now, no one can really understand this because one is one and three is three. You cannot say three but one. And also, if you look at the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they have three distinct personalities even within the Bible. And I'm quoting today the Quran and the Bible because beside the Muslim congregation that is here, we have a great Christian following on a Friday on social media, on YouTube and Facebook. So I'm not only speaking to the Muslim community, I'm speaking to the Jewish community, the Christian community, and whoever is tuned in. So we say with the greatest of respect, when I mention these differences, I'm not saying it with the spirit of condemnation, but rather the spirit of education, the spirit of factual information that we can know the differences and that we can maintain our mutual respect. So the, one of the fundamental teachings of Christianity, which has nothing to do with Jesus, because Jesus never preached the, the Trinity, never. The Quran comes out very clearly when the Quran addresses the Christians by saying, Ya ahl al kitab, la taghlu fi dinikum. See how beautiful and respectful the Quran addresses the Christians and the Jews. Ya ahl al kitab, O oh you people of the book, Allah says, la taghlu fi dinikum. Do not commit excess in your religion. Do not be extravagant in your religion. Do not say things which are not the truth and which are not factual. And what does Allah refer to? Allah says, وَلَا تَقُولُوا ثَلَاثَ Do not say that Allah is a trinity. Do not say that Allah is three in one. So you can see I'm not only speaking on a Christian perspective, I'm speaking Quran. 
Because this is what the Quran says. Wala taqulu thalatha. Do not say Trinity and do not say that God Almighty is three in one. Intahu khairul lakum. Desist, Allah say. Stay away from such speech. Khairul lakum. That is better for you. Innam Allahu ilahu wahid. For verily your God is one God. Now the Quran does not only say this just to be different. In fact, if you look at the present Bibles that we have today, and you will hear me say Bibles, because there's only one Bible, there's many different versions of the Bible. If you look in the King James Version of the Bible, this Bible is translated into all languages. In this Bible, the King James Version, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, the passage reads, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Will you believe me if I tell you that this is the only verse in the Bible that speaks about the Trinity? Because Jesus never preached the Trinity. However, afterwards they came out with a new version of the Bible, which they called the Revised Standard Version of the Bible of 1952 and again in 1971. And this whole passage, this entire verse was thrown out of the Bible. And who produced this Bible? 32 scholars, Christian scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations of Christendom. They came together, they looked at the Bible and said, this verse does not belong here. It is a fabrication. It is not in the most ancient manuscripts of the Bible. So they took it out of the Bible as a fabrication. Exactly what the Quran said 1400 years ago, that this is not the truth. They are now discovering the truth that that trinity is not actually part of the Bible. So they threw it out from the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, from the New International Version of the Bible, and many other modern versions of the Bible. When it comes to the Christian concept that Jesus is the Son of God, this concept, Son of God, the Quran also denies it. The Quran comes out very clearly. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say to them, Allah is one. Allahu samad. Allah is eternally one. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Allah does not give birth to any sons or any daughters or any offspring. Wa lam yulad. And no one created Allah or gave birth to Allah. Allah has no beginning and no end. And therefore, there is none that you can compare with Almighty Allah. So the Quran is very clear that there is no such thing as the Son of God. Again, I refer you to the Bible. King James Version John chapter 3 verse 16, it states, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This is to be found in the King James Version of the Bible. The Christian scholars that came together of the highest eminence who brought about the Revised Standard Version and the New International Version and other modern versions of the Bible, they took the word begotten out of the Bible and say the word begotten does not belong there. It was put in later. It does not belong to the original scripture. So you can see because they say the word begotten has an, is an animal act it belongs to the lower functions of sex. And this is something that you can never ever ascribe to God Almighty. Allahu Akbar. Allah takes serious exception. Serious exception. 
to the concept that people say that God Almighty has begotten a son. So much Allah say, Subhana, glory be to me, Allah, that people say that I have a son. That mere words that they are saying, the heavens are ready to burst asunder. The earth is ready to give way and swallow everything in because of people saying that God has begotten a son. This is serious. So the Quran does not only reject it to be different, but even Christian scholars find out today that the word begotten and this concept of the sonship is a fabrication. It's not part of the teachings of Jesus. Jesus always used to refer to himself as the son of man. Always. In the famous prophecy in Matthew chapter 12, verse 38 and 40, he said to them when he spoke about prophet Jonah, whom we believe in as Nabi Yunus, alayhi salam, he said, an evil and adulterous generation look for a sign, but no sign will be given to them except the sign of prophet Jonah, Nabi Yunus, alayhi salam. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the son of man, referring to himself, Son of man, be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Always calling himself son of man, which means Ibn Adam, which means a human being. He never referred to himself as a god or more than a human being. And then we come to the crux of Christianity, which is the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. We know the story, I'm not going to go into detail because I've dealt with it before. We know that our Christian brethren believe that Jesus was crucified on a Good Friday. That's why they celebrate the Good Friday. The Quran came come out very strongly by saying, him, Inna qatalna al-Masiha Isa bin Maryam Rasulallah وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ The Quran says, As with regard to their belief and the saying that they killed the Jews, killed Jesus, and they crucified him, Allah says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ They did not kill him. وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ They did not crucify him. وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ it was made to appear to them so. The man on the cross was not Jesus. The man on the cross was not Nabi Isa alayhi salam. Scholars differ. They say it was either Judas Iscariot, the disciple who betrayed Jesus, or it was a man by the name of Simon from a place called Cyrene who was carrying the cross of Jesus all the time and they thought he's Jesus because the Romans didn't know Jesus. They took the wrong man and they put him on the cross. That's why up till today you'll find in the Bible that the man that was on the cross, he cried out in his last moments, Ella, Ella, lama sabachthani, meaning, Oh my God, oh my God, why have you forsaken me? Why did you leave me in the lurch? Do you think God Almighty Allah will ever leave Jesus in the lurch? And do you think a prophet like Jesus will ever say to God, why did you abandon me and leave me in the lurch? There's ample proof in the Bible that Jesus was not crucified. And even we'll even go to the further extent because although as Muslims we don't believe he was on the cross, but we go further by saying even if he was on the cross, he did not die on the cross. And even if he was on the cross and he didn't die, there is no such thing as Christianity. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14, St. Paul says, for if Christ be not risen from the dead, then your preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. What he's saying, if Jesus was not crucified 
and it didn't die, then there is no such thing as Christianity to believe in. Not my words, the words from the Bible in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14. It is there for everyone to verify whether I'm speaking the truth. And so, again I say, the Quran does not mention this just to be different, but the Quran is factual. And so, where did these concepts come from? This concept of the Trinity, this concept of the Son of God, this concept of one God but many gods, this concept of Easter, this concept of Good Friday, this concept of making rabbits holy and Easter eggs is holy and hot cross buns, where did it originate from? Let me take you back in history to the ancient civilization or the ancient city of Babylon. Everyone heard about Babylon, Babylonia? Babylon, in the time of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now I first need to take you back to Nabi Nuh alayhi salam. Nabi Nuh alayhi salam, we know Allah destroyed the earth with floods, raining of 40 days and 40 nights. And afterwards, humanity started increasing again, and they became evil, and they became wicked again. And Nabi Nuh was saved, and his people, those who believed in him, and many of the animals were saved. So afterwards, Nabi Nuh salam, had a son, and his son's name was Ham. Ham, in turn, had a son whose name was Cush. And Cush got married to a woman by the name of Semiramis. And they got married and they begot a son whom they called Nimrud. Now all of us heard of Nimrud, that evil king in the time of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was weird. He was evil, he was a pervert, and he claimed also to be a kind of a god. But Allah sent a tiny mosquito that flew up his nostrils and started eating on his brain. And every time the mosquito bite his brain inside, his head was itching terribly. And the only way he could find relief if he banged his head against a wall. And the more the mosquito bite him, the more he becomes irrit irritable, and the more he banged his head against the wall. And he started getting people to hit him on his head that he can get relief. And one hit him so hard that he actually fell dead. This is how Allah deals with the rebels. Those who challenge Allah, those who think that they are someone or something, always remember we are nothing except what Allah and how Allah honors us. Now, this couple, Kush and Semiramis, they begot a son and they called him Nimrud. When Nimrud's father Kush died, Nimrud was so evil, he married his own mother. He took his mother as his wife. And from his mother, he had a child. And they called that child Tammuz. Nimrud was so powerful that he was revered as a kind of demigod. And his mother was also his wife. She was his powerful queen of ancient Babylon. And she started her own religion. So when Nimrud was killed, when he died, of course people thought, if he's a god, how did he die? How come he died? So his wife Semiramis made a plot 
and she started this new religion say, no, he didn't really die. He ascended into the sun. We now, from the day on, you must call him Baal. And Baal is the sun god. The sun worshippers today still worship Baal as the sun god. So she told the people that he's living in the sun and he is now the god of the sun and his name is Baal and you must worship him. And how do you worship him, she said? You light a candle because when you worship him, he will be present in the flame of the candle. Can you see where this evil action started? He will be in the flame of the candle when you worship him. And then she started further this mystery religion and she say, my husband is Baal, he's living in the sun and you must believe that the moon is also a goddess. And I, Semiramis, came originally from the moon and the way I came down onto earth from the moon, I came in a giant egg. So from today on, my name is not Semiramis anymore. My name is Ishtar. So Ishtar came down in a giant egg. Ishtar reminds you of? I want to know you're not sleeping. Ishtar sounds similar to? And the egg that should come out, Ishtar and, and the egg forms? Easter egg. MashaAllah. Also means as wakar. Alhamdulillah. She says she came down in this giant egg and this egg fell in the river of the Euphrates. The Euphrates River. And therefore, they must worship a husband as the sun god and they must worship her as the moon god. And so, Ishtar, then her son Tammuz, like his father, Nimrud, he was a hunter. He used to hunt. But one day while on a hunting expedition, he got killed by a wild pig. He got killed by a wild pig, a chinzir. And then again, Ishtar come up with this brilliant plan by saying to the people, you know what happened to my son, Tammuz? He's not dead. He ascended also into the sun to be with his father. So now you must worship them together as the father, the son, and the spirit. Do you find the link? Do you find the link of the Trinity? They must worship Baal, the sun god, and his son, Tammuz, and the Holy Spirit. That's why Christian scholars today are very, very true Christian scholars who truly make research. They are warning Christians today about this pagan origin of these concepts. And then, because Tammuz, as a young man, was very fond of rabbits. You know rabbits? Asis. Rabbits. Bunnies. I would rather use the word rabbits. Bunnies have a connotation. So he was very fond of rabbits. So when he died, when he died, his mother decreed in her religion that rabbits are holy animals. And then they started deifying and glorifying rabbits. And Tammuz, like his father, was a hunter because he loved rabbits. His mother then made the rabbits sacred and holy. So Ishtar then declared to her people that as they worship her husband Baal, the sun Tammuz and the Holy Spirit, they must also worship her and they must refer to her as the mother of God. Astaghfirullah. You know, I'm even hesitating to say these words because these words are words of kufr, words of total disbelief. 
God Almighty, Allah, can never have a mother or a father or any parent. And so they started worshipping her as well. And then she decreed, every year for 40 days, listen carefully, every year for 40 days, they used to mourn the death of her son Tammuz by saying, no meat should be eaten in that period. No meat, only vegetables and whatever they can find, but no meat for 40 days whatsoever. And the worshippers of that religion, they had to have robes on, making a T, the letter T, or a cross on their chest to show that they belong to that religion. And every Sunday, first Sunday of the year, it was Ishtar Sunday, and Ishtar Sunday was celebrated with rabbits and eggs. All these rabbits that you find in the shop today, dressed in colorful paper, and the Easter eggs, it come from that time. And they also were forced to eat sacred cake, a kind of a cake, and on top of the cake, there was either a T or a cross. What we have today as hot cross buns. Now let me make something clear. It's not haram to eat Easter eggs. It's not haram to eat the bunny, I mean the rabbit. <laughs> it's not haram to eat the rabbit. As long as you eat it with the right niya and intention, that is just another chocolate that you're eating. If I eat the rabbit, I bite the right ear first off. To show I'm, I'm eating it because I enjoy it as a chocolate. It's also not haram to eat hot cross buns. A hot cross bun is just another bun. But I never eat it dry. I always put butter, jam and cheese and it tastes nice. If anyone has a problem to eat hot cross buns, bring it to me. I'll show you how to eat it, inshallah. It's not wrong to eat it as long as you don't eat it with the intention that you're eating a sacred bun or you're eating a sacred rabbit or you're eating a sacred Easter egg. It's all got to do with your niya. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ wa وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمَانَوَا Every human being will be rewarded and judged according to your intention. And so, I can go on and on, but what we can clearly see, again I want to stress, especially for those maybe who came late or tuned in late, whatever I have mentioned with regard to our differences with Christianity or Judaism maybe, it is not in the spirit of condemnation, but rather take it in the spirit of education and the spirit of factual information because even Christian scholars are broadcasting these views. So in conclusion, allow me to say that paganism and atheism and everything that is evil, the very embodiment of evil is raising its ugly head again in our times in the form of Zionism. Zionism is also from paganism. Zionism reject the very existence of God Almighty. Zionists call Jesus the worst of names. I don't even want to mention the names. I'm too shy, too afraid to name the names that they are calling Jesus. Zionism has got no respect for the rest of humanity. According to them, you are either a Jew or you are Goyim. Do you know what is Goyim? To say plain, Goyim means rubbish. The scum of the earth. So those on Zionism, they believe that all the rest of the human beings, including all of us who don't belong to their race, we are the scum of the earth. 
That is why there are no qualms in killing innocent people up till today. Thousands upon thousands of Palestinians in Gaza. Men, women, children, babies, unborn babies in the womb of the mothers are not even safe. And therefore, in this hour of Juma, the sacred hour, I want to state categorically, how can the DA and any, all those political parties who support Israel, what kind of mentality do you have? What's wrong with you in supporting Zionism, evil Zionism, which can also be equated with Satanism? And therefore, I say again in conclusion, to every Muslim and every peace and justice loving Christian and Jew, and Hindu and the rest of people of every persuasion don't ever vote for the DA or any of the political parties that is aligned to Zionist Israel. And a few muftis, a few muftis in our country has already have already decreed that it is haram to vote for the DA. I don't always agree with many of the muftis, but today I give 100% support in saying that it is haram to vote for the DA. It is haram to vote for the African Christian Democratic Party who are Zionist churches. And all those parties that are aligned to Zionist Israel, don't vote for them. We are less than two months away from our voting in South Africa. Please, the DA is not a home for any Muslim. And any party that is aligned to Israel, Zionism, is not a home for any Muslim. And I say that without any reservation, without any fear, without any fear for any repercussions. Because when I stand here, I stand in the footsteps of my beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam for any imam who fears to speak the truth you are not fit to be an imam you stand in the shoes and in the footsteps of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you don't fear even if you have to pay the ultimate sacrifice of death we are not afraid of death because I know, even though the Barzakh, even though the Qabr is a lonely place, it's a dark place, but the Qabr is the entrance into the year after. And it can never be dark there. It can never be lonely there. My prophet is waiting for me there. I have a father and family that is waiting for me there. I have all the Muslim brothers and sisters in the Barzakh that is waiting for us there. We don't have to fear death. Death is going to reach each and every one of us. Some day, some hour, some minute, some second, we are going to leave this world back to Almighty Allah. May Allah guide us. May Allah help us. May Allah protect and preserve us. And in conclusion, I call upon our Honorable Chairperson, Brother Muhammad Abdullah, to do some announcements, please. Allah Akbar. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Just going to be with me. We've got a few announcements to make. Uh, we've got our 34th international annual Kira program happening on Sunday. Uh, we've got a Kari from Egypt, Muhammad Abdul Hafiz Al Daronki. And we had a pre appetizer with uh, Kari Muaz Mustafa from Thailand who did the pre Juma uh, recital. We also have Qari Sayyid Muhammad Hussein Nipur from Iran. Then we have some local Hufas as well, Sheikh Siraj van der Skeif, Qari Mujahid de Fris, and Qari Yusuf Davids, who's also one of our Hufas for the Trawi program. Uh, we also have a Al Qiyamu Leil program. It's starting from Sunday night at 11 p.m. So Sunday night from 11 p.m. for the last 10 nights, inshallah. We also got our Laylatul Qadr program, inshallah, that will be on Saturday night. 
Uh, we'll obviously start with the Ishai, then the Trawi, then uh, Sheikh Alexander will do a lecture, and then there'll be a Kira, a Vikar and a Sheed, then there'll be a Qiyamul Layl, and then we'll, we'll have a Salatul Tasbih led by Sheikh Alexander. So please do join us for our later Tukadl program. We also will have some food trucks outside that will be selling some uh, foods for sale. Um, so please join us and there will be some eats as well. Um, just a notice that the Iktikaf this year is full for Masjid al -Quds. So we suggest you try another Masajid if you have uh, the in intention to do Iktikaf this year. We also have uh, the children's fasting for the first year. It's obviously a special time. You don't forget that first year that you're fasting. Um, so we have a certificate that we issue. So please contact our centre manager, Zahira. Uh, if you want more details on that. Inshallah, we are planning to have this year, for the first time, uh, at Eidgah. So for Eid Day, we inshallah want to have an Eidgah on the field, across the road. So please uh, pass on the message to your families, etc. We would like everybody to come and join us together on the field for Eidgah this year, inshallah. We would like to make... Uh, oh, oh, sorry, just another note for Eid. Um, the signs of Eid here every day, um, the year today as well. The fitra this year is 77 rand. Um, we appeal the brothers to please pay your fitra early if you can, because typically what we find is on Eid day there's this last minute rush, and we as a committee in the masjid don't accept or don't take fitra. We leave that up to our brothers from Sanzaf to do so. So please do make an effort to pay your fitra early. Um, so you don't have that mad rush on Eid day to try to pay it in time before the Eid Salah. Uh, we have also have a uh, Sheikh Talib Baker who's selling uh, his book, The Forgotten Gems of Ramadan. That will be outside just after Juma. We're asking uh, the Imam to make dua for Shifa for the following people. Naima Dalvi who is in hospital and they're not doing well. Also for Nurjan Abdullah Parker, Widad Pangaka. Muhammad Abdul Hakim and Zubaida Adam. We also ask the Imam to make dua for all those as deceased uh, and grant them highest place in Jannah, specifically for those that recently passed on, which is Tahir Parker, Jawad Jahi Jirari, uh, who passed away three, way, three years ago, and his son who passed away yesterday um, from Morocco. His son's name was Majub. Uh, we also ask uh, Allah to uh, grant uh, our stalwart trustee and uh, member of the committee. Years ago, he passed away, Abdullah Gangrika. Um, he passed away eight years ago in Ramadan. We ask Allah to grant him also a highest place in Jannah, inshallah. And I want to ask what Sheikh normally asks on a Friday. Um, the surah before surah, uh, surah Juma is Surah Saf. So can we all stand up, including the ladies? Stand up, fill all the gaps. I'm going to give it about two minutes because typically you'll find that the sides doesn't get filled up. There's a lot of people outside, a lot of people standing at the back trying to get in. So if we can just uh, spend a minute or two just to fill the spaces in front of you, inshallah, so that we can fill everybody that we can into the masjid. These are the outside as well, so the ladies as well, inshallah. We can just fill the stuff from the front. And the courtyards as well, if you can just move forward in the courtyard, just frees up a little more space for people to come into the masjid as well. Okay, shukran jazeelan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah 
الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا محمد محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمسلمين رب احتم لنا بالخير برحمتك يا رحم الرحيمين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا للصلاة حيا للصلاة حيا للفلاح حيا للفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات بغير عمد وخلق الخلق ولم ينس أحد هو الأحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد يا لطيفا بخلقي يا خبيرا بخلقي يا عليما بخلقي ألتف بنا يا لطيف يا عليم يا خبير أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له شهادة تنجي قائلها من عذاب الجحيم وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله حبيب الرحمن الرحيم اللهم فصل وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي الكريم والرسول سيد السند العظيم ذي القلب الرحيم سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأمتي إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فيا أمة التوحيد أوسيكم ونفسي أولا بتقوى الله تعالى وطاعته وفي هذه أيام الغفلة والفتن تمسكوا بكتاب الله وبسنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم استمعوا جيدا إلى قول الله تعالى وقال أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولا تقولوا ثلاثة انتهوا خير لكم إنما الله إله واحد وقال تعالى وما قتلوه وما صلبوه ولكن شبه لهم وإن الذين اختلفوا فيه لفي شك منه ما لهم به من علم إلا اتباع الظن وما قتلوه يقينا بل رفعه الله إليه وكان الله عزيزا حكيما وقال تعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد صدق الله مولانا العظيم الحديث قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من مات يوم الجمعة كتب الله له أجر شهيد ووقى فتنة القبر وقال أيضا أنا أولى الناس بعيسى بن مريم لأنه لم يكن بيني وبينه نبي أو كما قال صدقت يا سيدي يا حبيبي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بارك الله لنا ولكم بالقرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله أستغفر الله أستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولوالدي ولوالديكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات فتوبوا إلى الله إنه كان غفارا اللهم سل وسلم وزد ودم ونم وتفدل وبارك في جلالك وكمالك على زين وأشرف العبادك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وسلم رضي الله تبارك وتعالى أن 
كل صحابة أجمعين الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر والصلاة والسلام على سيد البشر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين وقال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أي والذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ورد الله مع الخلفاء الراشدين أمير المؤمنين سيدنا أبي بكر الصديق وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنهم وعن بقية الصحابة والقرابة والتابعين وتابع التابعين وتابعين بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعل هذا البلد آمنا مطمئنا وسائر بلاد المسلمين أجمعين فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا واحفظنا يا الله يا الله من كل بلاء الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة اللهم احفظ أهلنا في غزة اللهم انصر المسلمين والمستضعفين في غزة وفي فلسطين اللهم اجعل غالبا على أعدائهم يا مولانا يا رب العالمين اللهم أهل حكومة إسرائيل وجنودها كما أهلكت عادا وثمود اللهم شتت شملهم اللهم دمر ديارهم اللهم زلزل أقدامهم اللهم مزق جمعهم يا عزيز يا قوي يا متين يا جبار يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل كل واحد منا أمر وحج بيتك الحرام اللهم عيد المسجد الأقصى إلى رحاب المسلمين إلى أخوي المسجد الحرام ومسجد النبوي المدني الشريف آمين يا رب العالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة. Kindly make the soft and fill up all the gaps, please. Heels on the line, shoulder to shoulder, please. أن محمد رسول الله حي الله قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استقيموا يرحمكم الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين 
اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والقرآن المجيد بل عجبوا أن جاءهم منذر منهم فقال الكافرون هذا شيء عجيب إذا متنا وكنا ترابا ذلك رجع بعيد قد علمنا ما تنقص الأرض منهم وعندنا كتاب حفيظ بل كذبوا بالحق لما جاءهم فهم في أمر مريج أفلم ينظروا إلى السماء فوقهم كيف بنيناها وزيناها وما لها من فروج والأرض مددناها وألقينا فيها رواسي وأنبتنا فيها من كل زوج بهيج تبصرة وذكرى لكل عبد منيب ونزلنا من السماء ماء مباركا فأنبتنا به جنات وحب الحصيد والنخل باسقات لها طلع نضيد رزقا للعباد وأحيينا به بلدة ميتا كذلك الخوج الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح 
ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلاة تنجنا بها من جميع الأهل والآفات وتقضي لنا بها جميع الحاجات وتطهرنا بها من جميع السيئات وترفعنا بها عندك أعلى الدرجات وتبلغنا بها أقصى الغيات من جميع الخيرات في الحياة وبعد الممات وعلى آله وصحبه سلم تسليما كثيرا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ربنا تقبل منا صلاتنا تامة واغفر لنا ذنوبنا عامة ولا تعذبنا يا الله يوم القيامة إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم سلمنا وسلم ديننا وسلم توحيدنا وسلم معرفتنا وسلم أرواحنا وسلم أجسادنا اللهم أحيينا بالإيمان وأمتنا بالإيمان واحشرنا بالإيمان وأدخلنا الجنة مع الإيمان برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا ولوالدينا وارحمهم كما ربونا صغارا ولجميع المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك من النعمة تمامها ومن العصمة والصحة دوامها ومن الرحمة شمولها ومن العافية حصولها ومن العيش أرغده ومن العمر أسعده ومن الإحسان أتمه ومن الإنعام أعمه ومن الفضل أعذبه ومن اللطف أنفعه اللهم كن لنا ولا تكن علينا اللهم انصرنا ولا تنصر علينا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه نبيك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم 
وأنت المستعان وإليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين مولانا دعوهم فيها سبحانك اللهم وتحيتهم فيها سلام وآخر دعوهم أن الحمد لله رب العالمين